so so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, exponential integrators and splitting fast and slow modes. So um, so so just before I get started, just a brief overview uh, over the time stepping schemes that are currently available in MPAS also. So there's uh, there's uh, the the first one is RK4, which uses a, a global time step. But as we've seen, as we've seen before, it's subject to a CFL, but it has uh, certain advantages. But one big disadvantage for the global ocean is it does not exploit the splitting be between fast and slow dynamics. So even on a uh, even on a global grid, uh, it will be uh, a subject to a restrictive CFL on a uniform grid. And the main workhorse is a, a split explicit scheme, which takes time steps which are much bigger than this. Uh, than this uh, than this CFL for RK4, and it achieves that by splitting uh, uh, the core dynamics into aerotropic mode and uh, 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 and uh, the remainder, which consists of the barotonic modes and the adduction. So this can be solved with a big time step, and then for the barotropic modes, you have to use uh, subcycles. And then there is also uh, tracers and vertical mixing, which I'm not going to talk about, but we are going. I want to see this addressed uh, in the talk by Sarah later. So, uh, and what I want to talk about here is an alternative to the split explicit method uh, built using exponential integrators, which we believe has certain uh, advantages, but there's also similarities. Um, excuse me, that was the wrong button. Okay, so so uh, so to just address the core, we focus here on a simplified model. We use a, a, a multi-layer shallow water model. And you can think of this as an ocean model in isopignal coordinates, but here we, we, we focus only on a few layers. So you have a bunch of layer thicknesses and layer velocities. And then uh, the two main uh, quantities that we care about here are mass. So we always want to have global mass conservation, of course. But we also look a lot at energy, because not only because it's a physical quantity, but also because energy conservation has something to do with numerical stability. So sorry, I got to get used to that. Okay, so and uh, and and one thing that's also going to be important for the design of the algorithms is this uh, Hamiltonian structure that we have. So if you take the core ocean dynamics and write it as an ODE, you can uh, you can write it in the following form, introducing the skew symmetric operator J and uh, and the the energy. And the nice thing about the twist scheme, which is underlying M plus O, is that it is mimetic. So. Uh, so on the discrete level, you have this term. And of course, uh, in a realistic simulation, there are many more forcing terms in the model, such as, for instance, we need, uh, we need additional drag, uh, diffusion, and forcing terms. But the idea is that these terms are usually relatively slow. So if we design a time-stepping scheme only for this Hamiltonian system, uh, then, we, then, we, then we can address the core dynamics, and then we can still incorporate all these other terms later uh, very, in a very straightforward way. And so the, the test case that we always uh, use to, to evaluate this is a simplified version of the SOMA test case. So you have this circular ocean basin, 2.5 kilometers in the middle and 10 kilometer uh, shelf, and you blow a westward wind over it, and then you get this uh, uh, double gyre mean circulation pattern and uh, uh, lots of eddies. And uh, it, if you use even the very coarse grid, so 32 kilometer grid, then if you use uh, RK4, then the time step uh, is restricted by roughly uh, less than four minutes. But if you somehow manage to get around these uh, barotropic waves, and I'm going to explain how that works later, then potentially you can uh, bump the time step up to, uh, to, to more than 100 times that. And this is then uh, restricted only by the speed of advection. So this is our goal. So excuse me. Okay, so um, so so how do we achieve that? So so we come back to this uh, we come back to this ODE and uh, the idea we are using exponential integrators. So we split the forcing terms into a fast linear part and a slow nonlinear part. So this operator A captures the fast dynamics, but they have to be linear. And then you can uh, apply exponential integrators. So for instance, the exponential Euler method, which just looks like an Euler method, but has this matrix exponential containing the lin linear part, which is sort of resolved exactly. And then uh, this method is only first order accurate in the, in the nonlinear part. So then you can go to higher order 
in an easy way using, for instance, RK2, which also can be interpreted as a predictor correct method. And so how do we choose this linear operator here? Well, uh, the easiest idea is always to use a Taylor expansion, but uh, the, the resulting operator is not so nice. So, uh, so, so the trick that we apply is we always linearize around a reference configuration for arbitrary uh, uh, layer heights, but we set the velocities to zero, and then we obtain this, uh, this operator with a uh, nice Hamiltonian structure. And if you look at it, it corresponds to a uh, multi-layer rotating wave equation. Um, so, uh, and, and in order to exploit further the structures of this multi-layer wave operator, uh, what we developed is an approach to, to compress it into a few modes. So if you do a formal uh, eigenvalue analysis of this, you can, you can, under certain assumptions, split it into vertical and horizontal modes, and the vertical modes have a very specific structure. So uh, the first mode is, uh, is, a, is the well-known barotropic mode, which is the fastest one, then come the baroclinic modes, which are already much slower. And the idea is to, uh, to capture in this linear operator only the fast mode. So what we do is we develop a uh, projection, a, a prolongation and a restriction operator, which takes us from uh, multi-layer uh, to uh, a configuration with less layers. For instance, only one layer, capture only the barotropic mode. And then we expand it back up with this uh, prolongation operator. And then the linear operator is just given by the projected version of A. So, so if you plug this into this approach, so if you build your exponential integrator upon this projection, projected version of A, then if you do this in the right way, you can still uh, maintain the symplectic structure. So you get, uh, you get a nice uh, matrix that you have to compute the exponential of. And if you implement this uh, exponential integrator, then uh, if you do some, some algebra, you can, you can find out that, uh, that you only have to compute this matrix exponential on a a uh, low layer representation of the matrix. So for instance, if you just capture the barotropic mode, you just have to solve a single layer matrix exponential. So of course, this is going to be much cheaper. And, uh, and then, so, so, so this is a, there's a huge similarity here to the split explicit. But what is the difference to the split explicit operator? So in all, uh, instead of having to sub-step a nonlinear equation, we have a linear operator. We can write it with a matrix exponential, and we have a lot more flexibility in how to choose this. And sort of sub-stepping is only one option. We can also use uh, Krylov methods. We can use high-order polynomial approximation, but we also can use rational approximation in order to, um, uh, to get around uh, uh, this, uh, the CFL for this uh, equation. And, uh, and then that's also, to make this work, you also have to uh, in, uh, implement filtering, and, uh, and, and this is also very nice, uh, very easy to do in this approach. So, so finally, uh, to give you some, uh, give you some uh, test case, and then on top of that 10 years spin up, we run another 10 years, and then we evaluate certain solution statistics, such as mean flow, and uh, sea surface height variance or uh, root mean squared, and then we compare, then we compare these these errors to some uh, over-refined RK4 solution, and and we, of course we try to get away with the biggest time step and to get the best performance. So if you run it with RK4, you see you have to uh, you have to respect the CFL and you get about one simulated year per day, and uh, and uh, then you can. Uh, set up these methods. So for instance, you can use this uh, ETD wave method without compression. Uh, you already get some decent speed up over RK4, but when you compress it only to the barotropic mode, um, uh, you, you, you can get even better performance. And uh, sort of uh, even with a third order method with a really uh, large time step size, we can get uh, some good performance all the while not increasing uh, the, the error very much over the RK4 solution. And uh, so, so this is what we've done. So we've submitted this to, to JCP last year. So, so what, is, what we are still working on is, uh, of course, we have this capability of using uh, more uh, modes, so not only barotropic, but maybe also the first baroclinic mode. So this is something that we want to investigate more in practice. Uh, then we still working on uh, this rational approximation so Chad is still uh, still uh, still making this work better 
And one thing that we that we also want to do is uh, we want to so, so so since we have a linear operator, there's certain ways how you can compute this matrix exponential better in parallel, and uh, you can cut down you can hopefully cut down on the communication cost. And and there's also a nice interplay between reduced order modeling, which uh, Chad will talk about later. And then finally, the, uh, one of the big goals uh, is the combination of uh, Domain decomposition, as we've seen before, and exponential time integration, and this is what Zhu is going to talk about uh, next.